This creature swims like a hippo, with its ears, eyes, and nostrils remaining above water. It chews like a camel from side to side rather than up and down. It has been mistaken for a pig, barks like a dog, and is equally at home on land and in the water. Any guesses? It may be time to put on your thinking cap. E. This is the capybara. Hi, I'm Danielle Dufault, and you're watching Animal Logic. When you think of rodents, you probably think of rats, squirrels, and other small creatures. Well, make room for the king of rats. The capybara is the largest rodent in the world, with an average adult weighing over 50 kilograms. That's 60 times more massive than their closest living relative, the rock cavy. The warm plains and rivers of South America are home to the capybara and thousands of amazing species. But earlier this year, we had the amazing opportunity to go north and see some of the strange creatures of the Arctic. In this hour-long documentary, I investigate the evolutionary adaptations of the astonishing animals who live in some of the Earth's harshest environments. One of the greatest survivors of the North is the Arctic fox. These small canids turn completely white in the winter to improve their camouflage in the snow. They're amazing lemming and waterfowl hunters, and their ability to sneak up on them is crucial to their survival. You can learn more about them by streaming Strange Creatures of the Arctic right now, as well as over 3,000 other documentaries on Magellan TV. Plus, Animal Logic viewers will get a one month free trial by clicking on the link in the description. And after you're done, keep watching Magellan TV for more amazing shows, with new documentaries being added every week. Thanks, Magellan TV! The capybara is the last remnant of a long line of gigantic, grass eating rodents that evolved in South America over millions of years ago. When explorers first observed capybaras in the wild, they were mistaken for relatives of pigs. Today, we know they are more closely related to guinea pigs than to Babe, the gallant pig. Their name actually originates from the indigenous South American Tupi language, which in the 16th century was the most widespread language in the continent. The word capybara comes from the Tupi word capiguara, meaning grass eater. Capybaras are in the Hydrocurus genus, along with the lesser capybara, which, as you might have guessed, is smaller and about half the size. Capybaras, sometimes shortened to capies, can be found in Central and South America, wherever standing water is readily available. Water is an absolutely vital resource for capybaras. In fact, these semi-aquatic creatures have several adaptations to life in bodies of water. They have small eyes, noses, and hairless ears located high on their heads, which allow them to keep only part of their faces exposed when their bodies are submerged. They have fancy flaps on their ears to keep water out. Their reddish to dark brown fur is long and brittle, perfect for drying out quickly on land. And they're great swimmers, due in part to their slightly webbed feet. Capybaras can stay underwater for an impressive four to five minutes at a time when hiding from predators, which are usually felines such as jaguars, pumas, and ocelots. Capybaras are so comfortable in the water that they can mate and sleep while partially submerged. So, as you can imagine, a standing source of water year-round is essential for the capybara's survival. Capys are herbivores and use their long, sharp teeth to eat a variety of water plants and grasses. Like all rodents, they have ever-growing front teeth. It's a necessary adaptation since they wear their teeth down daily. An adult capybara can eat over 4 kilograms of grass every day. But they're not picky, and during the dry season, when grasses aren't readily available, they eat grains, melons, and squashes. But their diet doesn't end there. Capybaras have another, more unusual food source that they don't have to go far to find. Capybaras engage in seekatrophy, a fancy word for eating your own poop. 
capybaras are hindgut fermenters. Grasses go through their stomach and then get fermented in their intestine. This helps break down the fibers and creates a more nutritious meal. Unfortunately, since the stomach is before the intestines in the digestive tract, they have to poop the fermented food out and then eat it again. Capybaras are highly social animals who exhibit complex social behaviors and live according to a strict hierarchy. A herd of capybara ranges in size from five to a crowded 100 giant rodents, with bigger groups tending to form in the dry season. Capybaras are extremely territorial when it comes to their social groups. They use their glands to mark their territory by scent. The glands are located by their nostrils, which makes it easier to smear secretions on vegetation. They may also mark vegetation by dragging their anal glands across it, or by urination. Hey, whatever it takes to mark your territory, especially when prime real estate can give you access to the best year-round food. Within a social group, females tend to reproduce around the same time, with most females giving birth within a period of two weeks at the end of the wet season. This allows their young to benefit from communal nursing. And you know what they say, it takes a village, and that's especially true for capybaras. Young capybaras frequently emit a characteristic whining or whistling throughout the day to maintain contact among themselves and their mothers. During the first year of life, the young are extremely vulnerable to predators, so their ability to whistle throughout the day really is a matter of life and death. Capybara communication is composed of several different sounds. In addition to the whistles associated with infants, there are also barks associated with potential predators, other barks that assert dominance, and chuckles between individuals traveling together. These sounds seem to be group specific, which means that social groups have specific vocalizations that are not understood by other groups of capybara. When they're not avoiding predators, capybaras have a very calm and laid back temperament. And this friendliness even extends to other species. On any given day, you may find a capybara with a bird companion or two. This is because there are several species with whom they have a symbiotic relationship. The birds will happily eat parasites off the capybara's fur. So that's what they mean when they say a feather in your cap. Capybaras are hunted for their meat and hides, and their habitat has decreased due to human activity. But their populations are stable across much of their range. We love a happy ending. So what should we talk about next? Please let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe for new episodes every week. Thanks for watching. See ya.